Hi, in this video I'm actually just going to quickly cover a basic concept called fill factor. Now the reason why I'm covering this topic is not because it's too complicated but because it's easy. And in spite of it being easy, I've seen a lot of people make uh, mistakes regarding uh, their understanding of fill factor and the role it plays in terms of database performance. Uh, most of you might have actually heard of fill factor in the context of page splits, but very few people actually understand what a page split is, and uh, that's one of the reasons why uh, fill factor is not really something that most people uh, really grasp from uh, their internals perspective of SQL Server. And while it probably doesn't affect most people in terms of uh, you know their day-to-day -day, um, jobs, it is still an important concept to understand. So from that perspective, I'm just going to go ahead and quickly show you a couple of demonstrations in terms of the behavior of SQL Server when it comes to data pages. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a database table called fill factor table and then create it again. You'll see that uh, there's only one column in the database table. It, uh, it's called uh, data and it's got a varchar 500. Uh, essentially the reason for that would be that if I've got 500 bytes per row and then I insert 500 bytes of data, then I I should technically be able to insert uh, 8 kilobytes worth of data to fill a page, right? So uh, the table is created, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and insert the letter A. You can see here that I'm replicating it 500 times so that it occupies the entire uh, this one. So when I insert it 2 times I get 1 kilobytes and when I insert it 8 times I get 8 kilobytes. So uh, I'll insert it one time and when I do that what I want to show you is basically the page allocation that happens for this table called fill factor. You'll see that as soon as I do that, I get one index allocation map page and one data page. You can see that here. And the page ID for these pages are uh, 34936 and uh, 34937. Now, in this particular demonstration, the only real thing that I'm interested in is the data pages. So you'll see here that I'm using DBCC page, MadWorks 1, 34936, right? And when I execute this, what you'll see is that we've got something called slot count, which is essentially the count of rows inside this data page. I've inserted one row, so I've got one slot here. And when I scroll down, you'll see that slot 0, column offset, and then the column is data, and the value is the letter A. Now let me go ahead and insert the letter B. Or actually, let me insert alternate letters, right? So let me insert C. When I execute this, you'll see that inside this page, I've still got, or inside this table, I've still got just the one page. And you'll see that at this point, uh, it's showing that it's uh, 34936. And you'll notice that the page free space percent is showing is 50%. Now, what you need to understand here is that it's not a perfect representation of the number of uh, uh, or the percentage of uh, free space, it is just basically different slabs. So when you see 50%, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's 400 kilobytes uh, or 4 uh, kilobytes worth of data inside the uh, the page. So uh, now that we know that, let's go ahead and execute this again and uh, let's see if we have a slot count of 2. And uh, there we go, we've got a slot count of 2. And if I scroll down, you'll see this is my first letter or first record A and then we've got my second record C. So let me just go ahead and insert a few more records here. So let me do this uh, C, D, E, and then I'll put in G, I, K. So I've inserted a few. I don't really know exactly how many rows I've inserted so far, but you'll still see that I've got two pages, one index allocation map and one uh, uh, IAM, uh, data page, and it's still showing as 50%, right? So when I execute this, let's see how many rows uh, I've got in here. So as far as slot count goes, I've got six rows inserted. So I'll go ahead and do K KLM. N O Q S. Right, so uh, let's see how many rows we have now. So you'll see that again, I've still got just the two. So I've got uh, three, four, nine, three, six. Right. So let me just execute this. And at this point, I've got a slot count of ten, and I've got five hundred characters. So I've got five kilobytes worth of data in here. Right, so uh, at this point, I'll just go ahead and insert S a few times over here. So I'll insert it three more times. So that will be about 1.5 kilobytes more worth of data. You can see here I'm still. So 
if you look, if I look at the slot count here at this point it is 13 so that would be 13 into um, 500 so that is 6.5 kilobytes so let me just insert one more and let's see if we cross the threshold so you can see as soon as I insert one more you'll see that I've got a new page allocated and what you'll see in this new page that has been allocated is that I've got two pages here and 34936 actually shows as 95 percent and 34938 shows as 50 percent now that is m uh, a misdirection of sorts because if you see here 34936 which is the page that we're looking at here if you scroll down uh, I'm sorry not scroll down if you see here we've got 13 rows here so 13 into 500 kilobytes indicates that we've got about 81 percent of this page actually occupied so the reason I wanted to show you that is because when you see this value here of uh, page free per, uh, free space percent it's actually telling you the percentage occupied and not the percentage free right so that's the first thing you need to keep in mind the other thing you'll keep in mind here is that if you look here I've got 13 rows inserted in the first data page and then the rest of them are actually inserted in the second page which is 34938 at this point if you see your 34938 has just got the one row so let me go ahead and insert another one here right? And when I execute this you'll see that now 34938 has got a slot count of 2 and 34936 which was our original data page will still contain its original 13 right? At this point, the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and show you the behavior of a clustered index and what happens when you go ahead and change the default of the fill factor. So in my particular case, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go ahead, right click and I'm going to create an index. So just let me refresh this. Yeah, and uh, fill factor is here. I'm going to create a clustered index on this column. Press OK options and I'm going to change the fill factor to 50% which means that the data page will be 50% full so at this point when I do this what, what happens is that a clustered index is basically the table itself so it rearranges the data in the t uh, table and uh, what we're going to see now when I execute this is we're going to see uh, not three but four pages now that's where things get interesting because we still have two data pages we got the index allocation map and then we got the one page which is the index page for the B tree so at this point uh, let me go ahead and look at my data pages you'll also see that the page number has changed so it's not rearranging the data in the same pages it allocates new pages and puts them there you'll also notice that uh, the sequential order of the uh, the pages basically 39 40 41 and 42 and uh, that's usually the way it is so let's have a look at the contents of these pages now earlier if you remember one page had 13 rows and the other page had two rows whereas now when we go ahead and open it up you'll see that one page has got eight rows and the other page uh, should have the remaining so let me just go ahead and look at that page ID as well so that will be this one which is uh, the data page and you'll see that here again the slot count is seven so it's roughly balanced out between the two of them so we've got uh, uh, 15 uh, pages or 15 rows of data equally distributed between the two of them and uh, if you come back to this one you'll see that now what we'll have here in terms of page free space percent is that uh, it all shows up as null right so the idea behind fill factor is to rearrange the data and make sure that there's enough free space inside that particular page. The advantage of doing something like that is when I go ahead now and insert the letter B uh, uh, 500 times, it's supposed to go into the first page, right? And there is actually enough space in the first page. So when I execute this, you'll see that we get the same data pages as before. We've got same number of rows, four of them. And uh, this is the ID for the first page so I'll go ahead and select that run DBCC page and you'll see that now over here the slot count is 9 and because the slot count is 9 what I should be seeing here is the first record A the second record B which is the one that we just inserted followed by the alternate record C D uh, C E etc so I could go ahead and now insert the letter D here and come back and look at this guy in fact let me just first show you this one 
so still four of them and I execute this okay so now when I insert the letter D into the um, into the table you'll see that uh, what happens is that after ins inserting the letter D when I do the um, data page uh, you'll see that it's inserted in the first page itself which is um, 34939 nine. Right, so here we've got a slot count of 9 right so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna keep inserting more data into this until uh, it fills up and then I wanna show you what happens to the next page right so we've inserted D so let's insert uh, E is already there and let's insert F right so I'll insert F and uh, I'll execute this you can see here I'm still got I've still got four of them and I execute this you'll see that my slot count is now 11 so it's not splitting the data at this point so I'll go ahead EFGH still got four of them and I've got a slot count of 12 right so that would be we're getting close to this limit here so uh, let's go ahead EFGH IJ slot count of 13 and you'll see here now what's happened is that I have gone ahead and inserted 13 uh, I guess excess of 13 rows and you'll see that uh, at this point page numbers are the same but let's look at the contents of the page now so the last letter I inserted was the letter L let's see which page that letter went into you'll see that it's got slot count 14 over here and A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. I got two I's there. Actually, okay, I think that's a J, K, L. So you'll see here that so far all the information I've typed in has gone into L and then the O that you see here is not something that I inserted into the first page but it's uh, rearranged from when we did the uh, the clustered index with the full factor so L M is the next one so when I insert M let's see what happens so at this point what's happening is that all my data is still being inserted into the first data page right and when I execute this now we already know that uh, we've got 15 over here so you'll see that the data is being pushed into the same data page and uh, we actually finished doing the first fill factor in terms of 50 percent over there but now we're bringing it back to a hundred percent where all the data gets crammed into the same data page so you'll see that M is here and then followed by O so now let me do N at some point we'll reach a point where uh, uh, there just can't be any more data that can be saved inside this data page and I'm trying to get there slowly by demonstrating each aspect of it so you'll see that we've got N over here so at this point all the new information we're adding is going uh, beyond whatever 50 percent was assigned initially so I think we're close to the point where the split will happen so actually uh, let's have a look here you can see here that the M and then the N happened here but the O got pushed into the other page you'll see that the O that was initially part of this page is no longer available inside the page and it, it stops at N so let's have a look at this you'll see that now a split has happened and I have five rows over here we have got an additional page here and uh, let's look at the contents of this page so you see here I've got the allocation map page and I've got two pages here and you'll see that I've got one page that doesn't kind of sit right because we know we got the initial sequential uh, numbers here which is at 39, 40 and 41 and 42 but then you see we've got another one called uh, 34936 which doesn't seem to fit in any particular order in this particular case so when I select this guy and open him up let's see what information we have here when I execute this you'll see that the slot count is just the one and more importantly you'll see that it's only the letter O that got shifted into this page or into this slot so this is essentially what the page split does for you it rearranges your data in uh, the order that it finds that information coming in and as a result if you've not really chosen the right fill factor 
you will end up causing page splits where the information that needs to be co-located with other information in the same table in the same data page kind of gets pushed out into a separate data page of its own. So you'll see that in this particular case if I want all the alphabets from A to Z I know that the second data page that I had initially has 50% free space in it but the O doesn't go to that data page instead it gets its own data page and that's basically the point of splitting the page itself. Uh, the correction or the way to fix this is fairly simple all you need to do is rebuild your clustered index at which point the fill factor will come into play again. So in this case what I'll do is I'll go ahead go to properties over here and uh, I'll come to properties over here and uh, I'll change the fill factor from 50 to uh, I'd say let's about let's say about 80 right yeah and once I've done that when I re uh, check the indexes you'll see that the fifth page has disappeared and I'm back to my original four pages and I've got the um, two data pages here and again the data gets rearranged or distributed so that uh, we have an equal number of or approximately equal number of rows in both data pages so uh, let's see what the slot count here is it's 10 over here and uh, it'll be I guess roughly about 10 or slightly more maybe on the second one and that's this one here yeah 10 so we got 20 altogether so this is the idea behind a page split obviously if you do a lower uh, fill factor then what happens is that you have the ability or you have more opportunity to insert data into the existing page however keep in mind that when you do too many inserts into the existing page you will still end up with a page split and the way to correct that would be to then rebuild the index uh, especially the clustered index in order to go ahead get those pages to be aligned uh, more closely with uh, with relation to the data that's being inserted so uh, yeah, that's basically it. So again, you'll obviously see some differences in terms of uh, uh, some advantages in terms of uh, using fill factor. For example, if you use a fill factor of 100, then you end up using fewer data pages, which means that you reduce the size of the database. But at the same time, uh, when you use 100 as a fill factor, you miss out on any opportunity of being able to insert data in between uh, that page, basically and uh, any data that you insert beyond that point uh, which exceeds the threshold of that page will have to be pushed into an own dedicated page and that in turn will affect your lookups at the disk level so uh, I hope this has been interesting uh, the intention here was just to give you an idea about how fill factor works and uh, how uh, how it looks like in the internals or in the data page or in the disk itself uh, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video